we're given the function f of x comma y and asked to list their critical points in the form of x comma y. And then from there, we'll determine whether the function has a relative min, relative max or saddle point at the critical points to answer the last two questions. To find the critical points, we locate the points where both first order partial derivatives are equal to zero or do not exist. And then to determine whether we have a relative min, max, or saddle point, we perform the second partials test. Let's begin by determining the first order partial derivatives. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us two x plus zero plus 24y. And to find the partial of f with respect to y, we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to y, now treating x as a constant which gives us zero plus eight y cubed plus 24 x. Both partial derivatives exist over all real numbers and therefore to find their critical points, we set both equal to zero and solve as a system of equations. Let's solve the system using the method of substitution. Let's begin by solving the first equation for x by subtracting 24 y on both sides of the equation, which gives us two x equals negative 24 y and then dividing both sides by two, we have x equals negative 12y. And now we'll substitute negative 12y for x in the second equation of eight y cubed plus 24 x equals zero, which gives us the equation eight y cubed plus 24 times negative 12 y equals zero. Multiplying, we now have the equation eight y cubed minus 288 y equals zero. I think we can solve this by factoring. Let's first factor out the greatest common factor of eight y which gives us eight y times the quantity y squared minus 36 equals zero. Notice y squared minus 36 is a difference of squares. In factored form, we have eight y times the quantity y plus six times the quantity y minus six equals zero. This gives us three solutions. We have y equals zero or y equals negative six or y equals positive six. But we're looking for the critical points in the form of x comma y. So now we need to find the corresponding x value for each of the y values. And we can do this using the equation x equals negative 12y. So when y is equal to zero, x is equal to negative 12 times zero, which equals zero. The first critical point is zero comma zero. When y is equal to negative six, x equals negative 12 times negative six, which is positive 72, giving the critical point 72 comma negative six. And then finally, when y is equal to positive six, we have x equals negative 12 times six, which equals negative 72, giving us the last critical point of negative 72 comma six. Now that we have the three critical points, we need to perform the second partials test to determine whether we have a relative min, relative max saddle point, or the test is inconclusive at each of the three critical points. To perform the second partials test, we need to find the second order partial with respect to x, the second order partial with respect to y, as well as the mixed second order partial with respect to x, then with respect to y. So let's go ahead and find those now. The second order partial with respect to x is equal to the derivative of the first order partial with respect to x with respect to x again, treating y as a constant, which gives us two. To find the second order mixed partial with respect to x, then with respect to y, we differentiate the first order partial with respect to x, now with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us 24. And to find the second order partial with respect to y, we differentiate the first order partial with respect to y with respect to y again, treating x as a constant, which gives us 24y squared. Notice the only value that's going to change is the second order partial with respect to y because it's equal to 24y squared. Let's go ahead and find the second order partial with respect to y at the three critical points. At the point zero, zero, the second order partial with respect to y is equal to zero. At the point 72 comma negative six, the second order partial with respect to y is equal to 864, and we get the same result at the point negative 72 comma six. So now we're ready to find the value of d, so we can determine whether we have a relative min, relative max saddle point, or the test is inconclusive at each of the three critical points. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, we know the three critical points now. Now we'll work on classifying them. So let's first find the value of d at the critical point zero comma zero, the second order partial with respect to x at the point zero comma zero is two. It's gonna be the same value for all three points. The second order partial with respect to y is equal to zero at the point zero comma zero. So far we have two times zero, 
and then minus the square of the mixed order partial with respect to x, then with respect to y at the point zero comma zero, which again for all three points is going to be 24, giving us minus the square of 24, and we have a d value of negative 576. So looking at our notes below, because d is negative, we have a saddle point at the critical point zero comma zero. So if we take a look at our question above, the critical point at the origin is a saddle point. And now let's determine the value of d for the critical point 72 comma negative six. The second order partial with respect to x is still two. The second order partial with respect to y is now 24 times the square of negative six. And then we have minus, again, the square of the mixed second order partial with, with respect to x, then with respect to y, still gives us minus a square of 24. And we have a d value of 1,152. So because d is positive, we also need to notice that the sign of the second order partial with respect to x is two or positive. So again, looking at the notes, since d is positive, and so is the second order partial with respect to x, then the function has a relative minimum at the critical point of 72 comma negative six. So looking at the problem above, the critical point with a positive x value, which is a critical point of 72 comma negative six, we know we have a relative minimum. We'll find the relative minimum value in just a moment. Let's also find the value of d at the critical point of negative 72 comma six. This gives us two times, 24 times the square of positive six, again minus the square of 24, which gives us the, which, which equals 1,152. So once again, because d is positive, and so is the second order partial with respect to x, we know we have another relative minimum at the critical point of negative 72 comma negative six. So while we are done with the problem, let's actually find the relative minimum function values for these last two critical points. To do this, we evaluate the original function at the critical points, and notice in both cases, the function values are negative 2,592. So the relative minimum values are the function values of negative 2,592 that occur at the critical points of 72 comma negative six and negative 72 comma six. Sometimes you'll be asked to give the entire point that represents a relative min or max, which in our case would be the points 72 comma negative six comma negative 2,592, as well as negative 72 comma six comma negative 2,592. I hope you found this helpful.